You just stopped the biggest killer in South Park history. We would give you a reward, but I guess that knowing the people of South Park are safe again is reward enough. Guess again. All right, here's a hundred dollars. Finally, a South Park video. For the first time in forever. Can't neglect my baby. But first things first. Ahem. Kitty, how could you? First you do a video with a weird voice because you think it's funny. And then, as a woman of color, you're making a video about police officers. You are not going to win many friends. All you're doing is upholding a system that oppresses you. She would be like these characters. I know, it's true. I'm sorry. I don't know what farm to table means. To my viewers, to make up for my failings, please, I grant you the ability to make as many furry jokes as you want. It'll also make up for the fact that I took forever to make this video. Even though I'm not a furry, that's just a nasty rumor started by people. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park, or more specifically, the topic of police officers. Time to take shots, or you die. Remember Puff Daddy? Now South Park is a town full of crazies, monsters, and mecha babuva stisendas. Despite this, South Park has occasionally had a protector in the form of police. Ever since its earliest days, Originally, it was Officer Bar Brady, but as time went on, he was gradually replaced by Sergeant Harrison Yates and a whole department to support him. And then he was fired and a whole bunch of other stuff happened that I will get to later. Okay, the question now becomes, who was the better officer, Bar Brady or Yates? The answer, neither. What, I'm being honest. They both have screw-ups, they both suck, and they're both awful. And I would not trust either of them to watch my cactus, let alone trust them with my life. But, 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 they did at least do their jobs. Usually. However, by a super huge, unsurprising margin, I'd go with Barb Brady. So, let's discuss. Starting with... Bar Brady, because he won out. Bar Brady was the original police officer of South Park, and because the town was super duper small, he was pretty much the only cop in South Park. While lovable, at times, Bar Brady was more of a hindrance than anything else. Like in Roger Ebert should lay off the fatty foods, where he got possessed by the magic of the planetarium. Not so fast there, Toby. Think hard, Elvis. You're a fat, stupid, worthless policeman in a small town, okay? Oh, thank you from a fate worse than death, counselor! Or during the pilot, where he's no aid in getting Ike back from the visitors. That's the third cow this month! This is nothing out of the unusual. Cows turn themselves inside out all the time. But there were times when he proved his worth, or seemed kind of savvy. During Spooky Fish, Stan gets a special present from his Aunt Flo. <laughs> Is it a cotton pony? Or a boat so he can float on the crimson tide? Your very own fish! No, no, it's really a fish. A spooky fish! Hence the title. A bunch of people start to go missing, and naturally the cops are a wee bit suspicious. Officer Bar Brady arrives at the Marsh family house, and seems to actually act like a competent cop for once. Mind if I look around the backyard, though? Why would you want to do that? Well, I'm checking everyone's backyard. Missing people usually turn up hiding in someone's bushes. For his troubles, Bart Brady is trapped in the basement for days on end. With no pants. For some reason. That was weird. Nobody's going to take my baby away from me. Nobody! Okay, Miss Marsh, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Don't worry, he's not without company. I mean, it's a basement. People have to use it. There's a policeman being held prisoner in our basement. Yes, hon. I had to restrain him so we wouldn't find the bodies in the backyard and take our baby away. Why'd you take his pants off? Eventually, he is freed. Despite his imprisonment, Bart Brady realizes that Sharon went cuckoo banana cream pie because of her special visitor or lack thereof. And he sympathizes because his wife, who I don't really think we ever meet, went through a similar predicament. I'm sorry my wife held you captive, officers. Oh, I understand. I remember when my wife stopped getting her monthly visitor. Uh, do you want your pants back? Instead, he ends up letting her off the hook. I guess it helped. 
Ah, that's funny, because fish. I guess it helps Sharon did not actually commit the murders. The spooky fish did. She just covered it up and got her facts wrong. Meaning we're gonna have to also ignore the fact she kidnapped a police officer. While we're on the subject, I guess we should focus on the other times Bar Brady did his job. And did it well. Next to Naughty Ninjas, Toilet Paper is probably one of my favorite Officer Bar Brady episodes. The boys are in art class one day, not cooking class, when they disrespect the sacred art of pottery. <laughs> boys, what is that? A reindeer? You know, I've had it. You four boys never take our class seriously. What a crime. That is not a reindeer, Cal. It's not red, nor does it glow. They get detention, and they're forced to do their work again after school, which is somehow worse than normal detention. Mrs. Strebel thinks she's so cool. How dare she talk to us like that? What the heck is wrong with you? I would rather have done pottery than just stare at the chalkboard and disassociate for an hour like I had to back in middle school. Screw middle school. Angered, they decide to get their revenge on the art teacher by throwing toilet paper on her house. You know, tea peeing. The crime, uh, despise, because nowadays we have to go through grievance. And as I write this video and record it, somebody in my house is sick with it. So, because my apartment's so tiny, I myself might end up getting sick later on. Eh, rather I get sick now than when I gotta go to Morocco Con at the end of the month. Look, the point is, boys, I'm serious. TPing is an awful crime. Let me let this guy explain why it's bad. There's no toilet paper in the stores right now because of the supply chain, genius. It's called following the news. See, don't you know the harm you're doing? It's like feeding bread to ducks. Besides, what is Cornholio supposed to do now? Kyle, plus the rest of the townsfolk, seem to agree about the nature of the crime, like they should. They treat it like the boys mutilated their art teacher and left their sea people in her stomach. Well, besides the actual teacher and her family who view it as an annoying prank. And nothing more. Just kids being kids. Look, we really don't want to make a big deal out of this. Look, it's, it's just not that big a deal. I mean, I toilet papered houses myself when I was a kid. You? <gasps> he was a perpetrator. No wonder he's cool with crime. He's always been a criminal. As the town's only police officer, Bart Brady is on the case. For his own personal reasons. You really have nothing better to do, do you? No, I do not understandable. But he's hit a dead end, so he's directed to the town's local toilet paper wing to get help. It's called Toilet Paperer's Row. I'm sorry, it doesn't really have a name. I was trying to be clever. And just to put it out there, I've never seen Silence of the Lambs outside of a couple clips and pop culture osmosis, especially from Family Guy, so I can't make any references. Sorry, Clarice. Anyhow, Barb Brady is directed to a toilet paper criminal, Josh. Josh is an expert in the field of toilet papering houses, having done it to 600 houses in one year alone. Josh Myers TP'd over 600 houses in less than a year. He's a real monster. So what, he did like two a day? For this intense, violent, wasteful crime, he is trapped behind bars with a three-week sentence, which he deserves. And they don't even put him in the fun part of the prison with Romper Stomper. Josh agrees to help Barb Brady find the culprits in exchange for one little thing. Toilet paper. Due to the harsh nature of my crimes, they don't allow me to have toilet paper in my cell. You know I can't give you toilet paper, Josh. No, but it was worth a try, wasn't it? Ew, and this is before Japanese toilets, meaning extra ew. I'm just saying, you know they're not giving a prisoner a bidet. Of course, Barb Brady refuses the request, and out of vengeance, Josh starts to ask him intense questions in exchange for providing information. Because I think Hannibal Lecter did it. It happens around three times. Do you want to know the worst one? Like the, like the worst of them? All right, all right, my dad dressed me up like a little girl at poker nights and made me sit on all my uncle's laps. <laughs> well, uh, oh. Thank you. Pretty, pretty dresses. I think what makes this funnier is the reveal Josh isn't really an evil genius. 
He's just a kid who's really, really bored. Josh, were you doing the silly voice for the policeman again? No, sir. And I can respect that. Still, you have to admire Barb Brady's dedication. He goes to the cashier to have him identify the remains and see if he can remember the boys. I'm sorry I have to do this. <coughs> oh my god. <gasps> Officer Barb Brady, YouTube does not allow such gore. Stop it. All the wasted toilet paper. My debit card is crying. At one point, to avoid getting in trouble, the boys, or more specifically Cartman, blame it on butters. You confessed? Uh-huh. Hey, they said I TP'd our teacher's house. I don't seem to remember it, but they're pretty sure it was me. I just can't get my behavior under control. Well, I mean, you do have DID, Butters. It explains Inspector Butters, Postman Butters, Professor Chaos. Regardless, Barb Brady is happy to get to the bottom of the case. At least until the Stotches explain that Butters was with them all night. We told you about confessing to crimes you didn't commit. We have had it, mister! Well, he kept accusing me for hours, and then he shot me up with sodium pentothal. And that's your excuse. Granted, Barb Brady's efforts are essentially for nothing. Like, like the whole episode probably would have gone the same with or without his plot. The guilt collectively eats away at the boys, and they all end up deciding, for their own various reasons, to confess. Which happens to be at the exact same time that Barb Brady brought Josh in to tell the school staff who TP'd the house. Tell us all who toilet papered the art teacher's house! Josh insisted he be able to tell you the names of the toilet paperers in person. Okay, I got this reference. Too bad Josh was jerry-rigged for nothing. What's the matter, Principal Victoria? Was your mother abusive? Did she spank your thighs with cold cut? Get him out of here! What? Actually, he might be onto something considering how Principal Victoria might have had to hide a body at one point. If you're wondering what happens to the boys, well, Cartman wins. He takes the school equivalent to a plea bargain, meaning he gets one week of detention because he confessed, while everybody else gets two. That consciousness is just caught up with me. That's not fair! This was supposed to be my story! My coming to terms with a guilty conscience! This isn't fair! Well, I mean, you could still tell them that Cartman simply confessed to get time off. He wasn't being brave. Come on, Kyle. It'll make you feel better. And in a way, it was still your story because you came to terms with having a guilty conscience. Eminem and Dr. Dre are gonna write a song about you. While a funny ending, this is not the end for the tale of Josh and Barb Brady. Josh somehow escaped out of his many restraints and ran away. And the cops refused to do anything out of fear of being labeled toilet paper mummies. He ran out the door! Couldn't you have gone after him? Well, I I'm covered in toilet paper. I look silly. Once again, completely understandable. Sometime later, Officer Barb Brady receives a call from somebody. It's Josh. He refuses to go back to prison because he wants to do something. Something major. Something that'll shake the world. TP the White House. Sorry, officer, gotta run. There's something I've been meaning to do for quite some time. Ciao. Wow, that is so incredibly wasteful. Imagine all of that TP could have gone to help, say, prisoners at a county jail. Then again, I can't go that far without mentioning the episode Chicken Lover, even though it should really be the chicken <laughs> but YouTube prevents me from calling it that. Gotta keep the lights on and the chicken nuggets on the table. Besides, I get it. Children could be watching. One day, the kids were going to the book fair on the Booktastic Book Bus. Sabrina Unchained. Wow, these books look cool. Hey, there's a lot of big words in these books. Did kids really have that? We never had that. We just had a tiny little scholastic shop in the library one week out of the year, until high school, usually in December. Hello, kids. I see you're discovering the magic of reading. Who are you? I drive the Booktastic bus, where magic begins. You see, reading opens up whole new worlds to you. Don't worry, I promise. All of this will be important later. Barb Brady has somehow become so popular that he gets his own segment on cops, detailing all of the problems that come with being a cop in a small town. There, you see? This could be a bank robbery, or possibly even a murder! This ain't no podunk little town! 
And Barbrady, your wife called she wants you to get some pizza on the way home. Weird to think that show lasted until 2021, like it was around even before me, and I never watched it. Granted, I think it still airs on the Fox Nation app, so yo-ho-ho, -ho, pirate's life for me. During his segment, Barbrady finds out there's a dude who is knocking boots with chickens. Barbrady, I just caught some guy in here having a <laughs> with one of my chickens. Ew, out of everything I ew this video, this takes the ew kick. Don't try to guess what's in it, it's ew. To make matters worse, nobody gets a good look at the guy. As the town's police officer, Barb Brady is once again on the case. Only he has a teensy wincy problem. The culprit was nice enough to leave him a note. Hey, what the hell's wrong with you? Every time something happens in this town, you say, nothing to see here and case closed. But we want justice! We have to find this sicko! Barb Brady reveals his deepest, darkest secret. He can't read. All right, all right! I can't read! There, I said it! Who was he, Krusty the Clown? Because of his illiteracy, Barb Brady enters a complete and total funk. Uh, just give me two cheeseburgers and some jalapeno poppers. Sure, there's just one problem. What's that? We're a bank. Well, it's your fault for not offering both. What kind of a bank are you? Imagine how much better your business model would be if you offer food and money. SpongeBob tried that. Pushed to the extreme, Barb Brady decides to retire, which would leave South Park with no protector. Thankfully, he and the mayor compromise that he'll merely take a leave of absence to learn how to read. By the mayor's order, Officer Barb Brady is on temporary leave of absence to learn to read. Effective immediately. Yes, that's right. It's back to school with Officer Barb Brady. And in the meantime, Cartman will take up his police duties in his role on cops. Yeah, you're the one who always plugs up the toilet at our house. I am a cop and you will respect my authority. Fun fact, this is the episode that gave us Cartman's beloved catchphrase, respect my authority. Oh, stop it! <sighs> yeah, sometimes upholding the law is messy. But you get by, one day at a time. And while I'm not this episode's biggest fan, if only because I find it a little boring, I will say thank you, writers. Barb Brady, in an effort to learn how to read, goes back to the third grade. And the boys are super totally thrilled with this new arrangement. Does anyone have any suggestions where we should begin with Officer Barb Brady? How about a brain transplant? Ooh, burn. Barb Brady, can you spell that? B-U-R-N. For burn. Naturally, Barb Brady is a great student. Go ahead, Barb Brady. Don't be scared. Ah. Uh, oh. Bzzzter. Did you hear that, Mr. Hat? Maybe you shouldn't go to school. Maybe you should get Shireen Baratheon to tutor him. I heard she did wonders for this Sir Davos dude. During one assignment, Barb Brady is told to do a book report, and he ends up reading the challenging Go Dog Go. I found it a compelling and disturbing look at the canine psyche. If I may read a passage. Big dog. Little dog. Yep, you totally earned that A. Now, Barb Brady is only supposed to be in school to learn how to read, not play with kids. Too bad he's too much of an idiot to remember what he's supposed to be doing. Or that there's a crazy chicken lover on the loose who's trying to make chicken McNuggets. Al, how's the reading coming along? Oh, pretty good. Barb Brady, we really need you to speed this up. Once again, the chicken lover strikes, and he leaves a note. But Barb Brady still can't read. Oh, I can't read this. It has silent E's. You have to learn to read faster, Barb Brady. Okay, I know the whole plot of the episode is he has to learn to read. But look, he's a cop, and this is an emergency. Nobody can do it for him. I mean, Mayor, you're standing right there. He's given the ultimatum of either learning to read faster or getting fired. Listen, buddy. Either you learn to read quick or else I'm gonna find a law officer to replace you. So to speed up the process, he deputizes the boys as honorary police officers. You can help me restore 
order, catch the chicken lover, and swing me on the swing set. Do I get a nightstick? Sure, nightsticks for everybody. Oh good, look at you taking my advice. The notes tell Bar Brady that if he wants to catch the chicken lover, he has to read books. And Bar Brady deduces the books are on the booktastic book bus. If you want to know where I'll strike next, read Bumbly Wumbly and the Spotted Spacecraft. To the McTastic bus, deputies! We have it a moment to spare! They retrieve the books from a suspicious-looking clerk. We need a copy of Bumbly Wumbly and the Spotted Spacecraft right away! Ooh, that's a very magical book, full of wonders- Ah, just give us the damn book, fruitcake! Obviously, this will prove to be unimportant. Poor Brady starts to read through the books, and all we see is clues as to where the chicken lover might strike next. I am Bumbly Wumbly. I live in the pond. A pond? Hey, maybe that means Stark's Pond. That's quick thinking, Deputy. Let's get to Stark's Pond immediately. Eventually, at the petting zoo, they discovered the culprit. Uh, I knew it was you all along, Richard Nixon. Ha, huh, I knew it. I knew it was him. He was angry that he had to step down as president and took his frustrations out on a bunch of chickens that couldn't fight back. Uh, I think that's a mask, dude. Oh. Whoa, dude! It's the bookmobile driver! Caught you red-handed! Oh, where'd that do? As it turns out, the bus driver did all of this in order to teach Bar Brady how to read, rather than, say, offer to teach him how to read. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, dude. Oh no, he who is blind can now see. I got Officer Bar Brady to read. My plan worked perfectly. He's gonna go to prison, but out of gratitude for helping Bar Brady, he gives him a copy of Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. So what are you gonna do now? Now? Well, I, uh, I think I'll get in the bathtub and then curl up with a good book. This is the best day ever. Then I read this, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. I read every last word of this garbage, and because of this piece of f I'm never reading again! Reading totally sucks! You know, I don't blame him. That book sucks. It's like a 60-page thesis swaddled around a thousand pages worth of preachy filler. By one of those Karens who insist the customer is always white. Regardless, something I've noticed about Bar Brady, in spite of his idiocy, is he has good qualities. For example, he has the heart of a police officer. Ah, that hurts! Whoa, dude! Cartman! No, no, that's not how you uphold the law! But he is not listening to my authority! Obviously, despite controversies with cops nowadays, I think it's obvious not all cops are racist, trigger-happy. A-holes. Just most of them! I mean, come on, if they were, we wouldn't have Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Besides the final season. Sorry, that was a joke. I'm Afro-Latina, I can say it. Point is, Bar Brady normally means well, and he has a sense of duty and protection. Those are all traits a good police officer should have. The problem is, Bar Brady doesn't have the correct mental faculties to properly apply them. And he's a tad lazy. It's why he's so gosh darn incompetent. This was explored in the episode Naughty Ninjas, where he was fired from the force. Barbara Brady is called into South Park Elementary one day by PC Principal because Leslie was talking. I told you to stop chatting with your friends, didn't I, Leslie? It's that one. That's her right there. You remove her from my school. He sounds like the vice principal I had in middle school. How dare children talk during lunchtime? Bar Brady thinks it's an active shooter, and startled by PC Principal, he shoots somebody. The wrong somebody. Mayor, I didn't know if there was a gunman or a bomb. You shot an unarmed six-year-old Latino child. I'm sorry. You are fired. The town is upset that Bar Brady did this to a minority because the town is now super duper PC. And because of that, he's fired. No, Mayor, please. This is all I know. I used to be the only policeman in this town, remember? First, he loses his sunglasses. No, please, not my sunglasses. You're done, Bar Brady. The town doesn't want you here. Oh my god, he has eyes. Where should I go? You should have thought of that before you shot a Mexican. Latino American. Latino American. Dude, just call him a Mexican or a Latino. It, it'll save you some time. 
R. Brady is fired, and as it turns out, his life has gotten pretty bad. His wife left him, or died, or something like that, and his only companion is a dog named Barney, who's a girl. It's kind of like Bonnie from Five Nights at Freddy's. Now that he's fired, he has to tell her the terrible news. Don't worry, old girl. Might be a little tough to afford your medication, but I'll find a way. You know me, I like to help. Oh! Unfortunately, Bar Brady's kind of like Jean Valjean, and because he did one bad thing, he can't find any meaningful employment. What I want to make clear is what Bar Brady did was an accident. He obviously shouldn't have shot that kid, and yeah, maybe he should have been reprimanded or been forced to wear a body cam or suspended or something like that, but Bar Brady's not Yates. Too bad nobody wants to see it that way. Soon enough, he's kicked out of his house, and he's a homeless man stuck at the Whole Foods. Just him and his dog. Here you go, old girl. We'll just have to make do. Aww. Might I suggest the both of you move to California? It's nice to the homeless. Because of Bar Brady, the police are all hated by the townsfolk, mostly for good reason. But this includes even the normal cops who haven't done anything bad or just trying to grocery shop. Now look, not all cops are racist trigger happy <laughs> Really? I'll bet you don't even know what farm to table means. And now they refuse to do their jobs out of fear of retribution. As a result, they refuse to keep the homeless out of the gentrified parts of town. Ew. Spare a dollar? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Thank you. God damn it. Ew. Why are they intruding there? Well, because of the ISIS ninjas. Long story. Needing a police officer to kill a bunch of kids, and quickly, they recruit Bar Brady. But they recruit him the way you'd get a five-year-old to brush his teeth or eat his vegetables. We need you to shoot some kids. No! Shoot kids! I don't want to shoot kids! These are really bad kids. Thankfully, Mayor McDaniels talks some sense into him. We were wrong about you. I was wrong about you. You protected this town back before anybody else ever did. Poor Brady goes to do the job he's assigned. To be fair, he does attempt to be fair to them, talking them down and all, not wanting to use violence. I'm getting pretty angry too, but we can't give up on it. Please, boys. Don't make this end violently. The problem is, Randy just figured out the kids aren't in ISIS like Archer. They're just playing ninjas. And once again, Bar Brady shoots somebody. What were you thinking? Boys innocently playing ninja and you pull your gun on them? David Rodriguez was lucky to live. You know, I wonder if he would still get in trouble if he shot a white kid. But you said you needed me to kill some kids. Oh, he's gonna lay this on us now. I said kill some kids, but I said it as a question, remember? I said kill some kids? Well, I mean, it's not like you also had agency in this, Randy. You could have simply texted him or, you know, not surprised him. They're just stupid ninjas! <laughs> Too bad Bar Brady gets fired again. Ugh, come on, way. What if we had an officer that could apply themselves and wouldn't mind getting their hands dirty? I'm sure such a man exists. Well, that brings us up to Yates. In the later seasons of the show, Bar Brady was gradually phased out in favor of Sergeant Harrison Yates, or Detective Harris, depends on the episode. To put it one way, Yates is the complete and total opposite of Bar Brady. Both are police officers, but whereas Bar Brady is a cartoony caricature, Yates is more on the realistic side, in more ways than one. However, outside of having more officers, Yates succeeds in one category. Motivation. The problem is, his motivation is directed at the wrong target. Unlike Bar Brady, Yates normally gets more things done, and you'll soon see why. Look, I hate to say it, but character-wise, I kind of prefer Yates to Bar Brady. And I think it partially explains to me why the writers got rid of Bar Brady to give us Yates. First off, Yates is probably much more fun to write for, and there's a lot more social commentary to be made with him. You could never do, say, an episode about Bar Brady framing Michael Jackson for molestering kids, 
simply because it would feel really out of character. He would be too stupid to plant evidence, and he would easily be led astray by MJ's music or his money. I could see him suspecting MJ, especially because of him sleeping in bed with the boys, but that's about it. Now, I will acknowledge that Yates is a terrible officer, and a racist, and a xenophobe. I wouldn't want him in my town. But for me, that makes him funnier than Bar Brady, just because of the lengths he's willing to go to be a racist and force his views on people. He's another person I'm surprised Cartman hasn't worked with, and the coon does not count. Just saying, I might have another top 10 list brewing. The episode that most comes to mind for me is The Jeffersons. Michael Jackson. Jefferson. Michael Jefferson, you. Yeah. Apologies. A dude who totally isn't Michael Jackson, who once again I'm just gonna call MJ to simplify things, moves to South Park and to the police. This is a major problem. Why? Well, because he's black. <gasps> oh no! Even if he doesn't really look it, and even worse, he's rich. <gasps> oh no! Above six figures. One Mr. Jefferson, age 50, bought a house there and paid cash. Take a look. Says here, he's black. By God, so he is. Which makes me fear for Token and all those celebrities he invited to South Park, unless to the police there's a difference between well-off and rich. As it turns out, many cops, including Yates, ended up joining the force, solely to arrest and frame wealthy black men, like Kobe, OJ. Murphy, you inside? We're inside, sir. Harris was right, this guy looks like he has more money than all of us put together. Wonder if they do the same to other people of color, because I would not want to move to that area. Yates does his own research and even calls the LAPD to see what they did about the new dude. We, uh, found some kids that had stayed over at his place and we asked them to lie and make up some fall charges. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Took years. Surprised they never made an episode on Finding Neverland, or the controversy of The Simpsons banning that one episode that honestly did not deserve to be banned. Just saying, they had a hologram of Michael Jackson, an episode about his death, this would be the best way to bring things full circle. Next, while MJ and Blanket are having an impromptu sleepover at Stan's house, the police break into his house and starts to make it look like a crime scene. And to their credit, they are extremely thorough, leaving no stone unturned. Like, I kinda have a few enemies I want them to go after on my behalf. I'm planting the cocaine now. Johnson, what about you? Placing the blood spatter now, sir. When this Jefferson guy shows up, arrest him fast and try not to beat him. There could be neighbors with video cameras. The thing is, it sucks they're putting this much effort and application into framing somebody. Like, imagine if they took that same energy and tried to be better cops. How much stuff they would get done. How many crimes they would solve. Meanwhile, Yates and some other dude are outside of MJ's house. Well, Yates has a nihilistic realization. Why is it that us policemen around the country have such a passion for framing wealthy African Americans with crimes they didn't commit? Oh, why? I guess I never thought about why, sir. At least until the next morning when they finally see MJ. That guy isn't black! Holy God, his son isn't black either! Oh, Jesus! This is it! Suspect is not black! No offense, maybe he's not the best police officer if he didn't get a photo of the perp. Just saying. This shocks him to his core. Does that look like a black guy to you? It's sort of the final seat. Jesus Christ, monkey balls! He almost made an innocent man go to jail who wasn't black. We could have made an innocent man go to jail who wasn't black! Oh! Uh. <laughs> that reaction is obviously quite reasonable. Broken by his actions, he goes home intending to quit the force, until a quick talk from his wife, Maggie, who is Irish AF. I'm giving it up, Maggie. I'm quitting the force. Quitting the force? You? None of it makes sense anymore. Is this a reference to something, her being Irish? Like that movie with Jack Nicholson, The Departed, right? Just like OJ. Do you know how hard those cops work to frame him? The tireless hours they put in. 
and then he just gets off because somebody messed up and said the n-word out loud too many times. Yeah, it's because of Mark Furman that OJ has to walk around the grocery store and have people say hello when they're really saying, Murderer! You got away with murder, you murdering, lying waste of life! Thankfully, from his perspective, not from mine, Maggie tells him that he's the best damn cop ever and he shouldn't quit his job all willy-nilly. Framing rich black men for crimes they didn't commit is in your blood. Wiping that rich, smug smile off their faces is the only thing that puts a smile on yours. His faith in the system renewed, Yates goes to arrest MJ, who is now in his true form. But Cartman, of all people, comes to MJ's defense. I am sick and tired of people harassing Mr. Jefferson! All I've been hearing since Mr. Jefferson moved here are sick lies! That he's a bad father, that he had plastic surgery! It's ignorant! You know, maybe he should be arrested for assaulting my eyes with that horrid form. It's ignorant. He's being ignorant. Carpenter argues that MJ is a good man who's harassed by everybody simply because he's rich. But much like Goodwill Hunting, it's not his fault. He had his childhood stolen from him because he constantly had to work. He never got the chance to be a kid. That's why he acts like one now. And clearly this excuses him making his children cover their faces or isolating them or looking like your mother-in-law before she puts on her human disguise. What's wrong with wanting to have the innocence and beauty of a child? Kyle has a rebuttal. All right. Let's just say all the bad things said about Mr. Jefferson are lies. And Mr. Jefferson is just a nice guy who's trying to be a child because he never got to have a childhood. Well, that's fine, except for that he has children now. And when people have children, they have to grow up. Well, more like a child, just saying. Blanket said that his half-siblings live with their mother. But the message seems to resonate with MJ and the police. MJ has a realization and decides to give up his money, get a normal job, and raise Blanket in a normal setting, giving him the childhood he wished he had, a stable one. Then because he's no longer rich, probably just well off, the police department decides to stop hunting him down like a mangy mutt. Well, if you're gonna give away all your money, then I guess we can drop all those charges. No point in putting another poor black man in jail. Oh well, sucks it didn't really work out considering dead celebrities. Granted, this isn't the only time we see Harris acting like a police officer. Butter's Bottom B exists, and it proves to me why Yates is a little more competent than Barb Brady. Or he would be if he actually fought straight. Butters has started a kissing company with another girl named Sally Darson. Basically, the practice is a G-rated form of solicitation for favors. You pay like $5 for a kiss, and then you get one. Butters also introduces other ideas, like offering hugs. But being Butters, he doesn't necessarily understand the implications. Exactly what kind of business are you running? It's a kissing company. My black employee, Charisse, over there, one time she made $2,000 on one customer. Can you believe it? $2,000 just to kiss a fella. Or how his business gets to be so big that actual escorts end up joining him simply because he's kind to them. $3,000 today for Charisse. Did I do good, Daddy? That is another sunshine sticker for you. Thank you, Daddy. The existence of his kissing company comes under the radar of the South Park Police Department and Sergeant Yates. Yates decides to get to the bottom of what's happening by launching his own sting operation. He poses as an escort named Yolanda and tries to worm his way in with butters. Gotta say, he looks pretty hot in that getup. The problem is, he gets a little too deep in the role, and that's not a pun. He arrests people for soliciting his services, including an entire frat house. Take them all to the station! Don't you stupid kids know the diseases you can catch? It's all good, but he seems to get a little lost in the role. Even the other police officers seem a tad concerned. Some of us are wondering if maybe you're not taking this role a bit far. What? No way. Granted, my favorite part about all this is how he loses himself so much that he even gets his own daddy. It's really cute. Hey, daddy. Where you at? Y yes, daddy. I'm on my way. Be right there. Sorry, guys. My daddy needs me right now. 
Eventually, he manages to hear through the grapevine that Butters is the dude running the kissing company. Well, well, this must be the organization I've been hearing so much about. You won't believe the hardships I've been through trying to track you down. And he's about to arrest him and complete his job, when suddenly, his daddy comes with flowers. You've got a lot of nerve coming here, Keyshawn. I love you. I need you. I want... I want to marry you. Just to show you once again how dedicated he is, he even marries him. He spends like a year and a honeymoon living in a fantasy dream world until suddenly one day, either remembering what his plan is or getting bored, or he's just that dedicated, does he arrest him. And that's good police work if I do say so myself. I want to get you something extra special. Well, hold on. I've got something for you too, my love. I just put it right over here by the freeze! Cartman's incredible gift also comes to mind. Cartman gets into an accident, and because of coincidence, Yates believes that he's now psychic. Hello, young man. Could we have a quick word with you? Not now. The nurse is going to walk in any minute with my lunch. 12.30, Eric, lunchtime. Young man, how did you know the nurse was going to walk in just now? He wants Cartman's help in trying to solve the mystery of the left-hand killer, whose entire shtick is he kills somebody and then cuts off their left hand as a memento. Cartman can't find the killer, because he's not really psychic, he's just fat, and the only thing that he does get is a bunch of wannabe psychics off his back by telling Yates they're copycat killers. The psychic detective's horrible crime was found out by psychic detective Eric Cartman who is now the only psychic not behind bars. What an amazing coincidence. Eventually, Cartman is captured by the real dude and made to look at photos of his vacations. This is me at the Grand Canyon. Do you see? This is me at Mount Rushmore. Oh my god, he's a tourist. No! To make matters worse, Yates will only listen to Cartman, or another psychic, not Kyle. They're never gonna catch the serial killer. He's too smart. Hey! What about this guy? Quiet! He's having a vision! At least until Kyle becomes psychic, too. He's killing them! Oh! I'm seeing it all flash before my eyes! The guy's name is Michael Dietz, and he lives at 621 Castile Street. He's usually there between 7 and 11 p.m. Yates eventually makes it to the killer's house, where Cartman is being held captive. And he doesn't see anything is out of the ordinary. I see you like cutting the eyes out of photos of women. My son is a big fan of that too. <sighs> okay. Eventually, he does manage to pick up a hand as evidence and runs a bunch of tests on it. Too bad it's a right one, not a left one. Wait a minute. Yay, the day is saved. Finally, I cannot go without mentioning Christian Rockhard. The boys illegally download music back in the early 2000s, and they get arrested by a SWAT team. Downloading music for free is awesome! What the hell is that? I don't know, let me check the- Freeze FBI! Not convinced it's a big deal. Not a big deal? You think downloading music for free is not a big deal? Deal. Yates ends up teaching them what's so bad about pirating music. This is the home of Lars Ulrich, the drummer from Metallica. This month he was hoping to have a gold-plated Shark Tank bar installed right next to the pool. But thanks to people downloading his music for free, he must now wait a few months. Are you a representative of UMPG? For you the reason I had all those problems earlier this year? Okay, I think I got my point across. Who is the better police officer? Obviously, it's Bar Brady. Despite being an idiot and shooting a Latino boy, he does still respect his position and tries his hardest to keep order in the town. It does suck he's no longer a police officer, but he is away fighting the ads. However, despite being horrible, there's still the occasional thing to admire about Sergeant Yates. He's dedicated. The problem is, he should really be given sensitivity training. If he spent more time trying to keep South Park safer, rather than protect alcoholic kindergarten teachers or wealthy singers, I think the town would be a lot better off. 
Not saying he should be doing what he did during the specials, where the other cops basically had an army, but maybe something like he did as Yolanda, if only on a quicker scale. Or maybe both officers should have found a way to coexist. Their personalities and styles do complement each other. <sighs> it's a crying shame. Anyhow, bye. Bye bye. Well, there you have it. Case closed. That's right. Return to your simple lives. Just forget this ever happened. Forget. Forget.